high school student fed up with the zebra mussel issues we've been having here. It's an invasive species that has been native, uh, killing native species and also clogging pipes in central Texas lakes. It's such a big problem. It is. <laughs> we <laughs> hear about it every year. We do. One student says he was just fed up with it, so today he's presenting his research to an international audience. This is pretty cool. Chris Davis, he's with us now. So, Chris, you got to hang out with this student and hear all about what he's doing. Nice. Yeah, that's right. So, he's come up with a way, essentially, to uh, choke the zebra mussels, and he's using something a lot of us have probably interacted with, probably without knowing it. So, this is CMC powder. It stands for carboxymethyl cellulose, oh. also known as cellulose gum. I picked this up just at a cake supply store here in Austin. It's not toxic. It's used as a food additive and thickener, really popular in gluten-free and low-fat foods, basically to imitate the consistency of what you're losing. And soon, it might also be used as a zebra muscle killer. Wow. The mission was clear from the outset. Figure out some way of killing the mussels without harming the native ecosystem. Lake Travis High School senior Jack Delasanti saw how bad the problem was when he started scuba diving in local lakes. And you reach the bottom and there's just a wasteland of mussels down there. He researched the mussels and thought, if only there was a way to clog their filter feeding gills. And that's when he reached for the CMC. It's naturally biodegradable. It's generally recognized as safe by the FDA. And it's also biologically inert, meaning that it won't, it won't affect the environment it's placed into. He got his permits, filled his parents' house with zebra mussels from Lake Travis, and tried to kill them. The very short version of his results, it worked. Well, the amount of dead mussels continued to rise throughout the entire experiment. He's actually got a provisional patent for this. His bio teacher went with him to regional and state science fairs. He won both. And now they're both in Phoenix for the International Science and Engineering Fair with 1,800 students from 75 countries. He has just taken the bull by the horns, and I was mostly a cheerleader, honestly. Most of my um, preparation for the previous two science fairs was winging it. Jack says he's more prepared this time. And regardless of what happens this week, he hopes his findings can just do some good for Central Texas lakes. I'd probably like to continue on with this project and see where it goes. The grand prize at the end of this week, by the way, $75,000. This is serious stuff here. There are a lot of other smaller prizes he can win, too. So have the folks in charge, like Parks and Wildlife, have they heard of the work he's doing? What's their reaction to it, if they have? Well, they, they hadn't heard about it until I called them about it. And I talked with an Inland Fisheries Regional Director, and he definitely did have some reservations about this kind of project, like the cost for one mm -hmm. and the need for federal approval to use something like this mm -hmm. uh, just in the environment. He's also concerned about possibly killing native mussel species. But he said it is a really interesting idea. They're always looking for new ways to combat this invasive threat. And on our website, Jack is going to address some of oh, those cool. concerns. Okay, that's a really good idea because the last time we had heard about zebra mussels, it's when the water started smelling really, really bad, and they had divers go mm -hmm. into some of those tunnels and take out the mussels. This seems like a much easier solution. That's one of the things he actually tested was in a uh, pipeline scenario, nice. and one of his ideas was if you can seal that off and pump in some of this stuff, Kill them and wash them out. If it works and it's safe, safe. that's right. Problem solved. Another, right. Thanks, Chris. Another factor is that um, mussels, they're breeding right now. It's kind of their breeding season. Zebra mussel embryos are tiny and they remain suspended in water columns for weeks after spawning. And it means flooding right now is likely pushing all those baby mussels downstream. That's nothing new. It just comes as an infestation that we've seen exactly like that picture right there. A